Hey team, this is Luca Crusader Machining back for another video. I had a couple comments in shorts and or videos among social media. It was comments and DMs. A couple people had a wonderful question they posed to me. That question was this. Don't you have any mills? Do you do any CNC milling? And the answer to that question is we have one mill. We do not use it that much. It's a wonderful tool wonderful machine but I'm gonna spend this video the next seven to eight minutes with you explaining why we do not have or use a CNC mill here take a look at this quick video to see how we implement milling on our lathes <laughs> Years ago in the industry, now I'm an old geezer. When I was a younger, more spry man in the industry, I started on mills. Well, technically, I started on brown and sharp screw machines back around 2000 or 2001. Worked on them for a couple years with my unky. Unk, what's up, unk? And then I worked on a couple of uh, CNC mills. I'm gonna stop that machine, it's very loud. Now we're back. That sound was we're cutting off a three inch bar of steel. So back to where I was down memory lane. Oh yes, I was on CNC mills. We had a, two or three of them, wonderful machines. They were great. We would use them mainly for secondary operations, little spot tap drill, stuff like that, make a fixture here and there. Absolutely wonderful machines without a doubt. And I have very fond memories of them. Back again. Anyways, let's cut to the chase. Our workload changed to a point where we were receiving a lot of orders of parts like this, that we would make one or two ops on a lathe, then we'd pop this on the mill. And then, ding, 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 we realized, we'll just make this son of a gun complete. And that's what we tried, that's what we did. We have not looked back. So I'm gonna show you one more quick video and the videos here are footage of mine from my social media of milling that we have implemented on our lathe. And just to be clear, some of the seasoned folks that are watching this video, everything, there's nothing that I'm saying that's new to you. This is addressed a couple DMs I received from people that I, I believe are either new in the industry or just interested in answering, or getting a question answered. This is posed to them. Everybody knows what a lathe is, everybody knows what a mill is. A lot of people new in our industry don't know that a machine like we have here, a lathe, I can do a lot of milling work on it. I can do a lot of work that you would normally do on a vertical or horizontal mill right here on the machine. This video is geared, and the information therein is geared towards them. Newer people that are in the industry to kind of see how we do it and how a lot of other shops do it. It's not new groundbreaking information. Just wanted to get, put that out there. But to continue, part like this. Years ago, in, when I was in the industry, we would make this on a lathe. Before sub spindles, we'd make one op on the lathe, second op on the lathe, and then we'd go on the mill. We'd have one op on the mill, two ops on the mill, three ops on the mill. At least three ops on the mill, unless you had like a rotary indexer, and even then it might be difficult to hold this. But with a Kurt Weiss, it would have no problem making a quick fixture, doing what you gotta do, indexing it around to make, and make a little pins to locate, no problem. But we decided that we wanted to do one and done, where we're gonna take a part, round bar, and make this. And we were gonna take the time and the manpower and the tooling to invest into determining how we'd make something like this in one op. And so far we've been very successful on a part like yeah, here's another one for example. This one, if you had asked me a decade ago or more, I would say you're gonna make this on a mill. And we'd make the whole thing 
in several different operations on a mill, but we're able to successfully make it in one operation. Pretty cool part for one op, right? All the sides are milled. We use that side milling in Z, a whole bunch of Z axis live tools, normal lathe work for the inside, turn the corners so the OD, the OD, which is just the rounded corners, is concentric to all the bores. We transfer over and we chamfer all those on the sub. That's the, that, that's the benefit of this advancing technology. That is rapidly advancing. Where I was in the industry 20 years ago, the idea of making this complete in one op, I'm sure there were some really, really great machinists and programmers out there that were doing it. I wasn't and we weren't. But since we have adapted to it and the mills that we had, once we started um, buying you know, multi-function machines with subspindle, live tooling, Y-axis, so on and so forth, they slowly started collecting dust. So we traded them in, sold them for the same, the similar types of machines that have the subspindle, live tooling, Y-axis, bar feed, chip conveyor for automation. And that's one of the main premises of this video, automation. When we're, and it doesn't mean that we want to get rid of a job because when we went from having mill operators load the mills and then started making them incomplete, we didn't downsize our manpower or get rid of people. We trained them on how to run this complete. And it took a heck of a lot of training. Here's another part that we did that was pretty cool. This is all lathe work and then here. And we do that all complete in one op. The little chamfers on there, we come with a chamfer tool. We go back in and re-drill, re-mill, return to make it completely burr-free. Same with the thread. I love making a burr-free thread. So those are just some good examples of parts that years ago we would have had to make on a mill, and now we don't. We'd have to have lathe op, lathe op, mill op, mill op, mill op. You know, between two, four, two, three, four, five, upwards of six or seven operations, and then hand detail. Now that's gone by the wayside, and a lot of shops are adopting that technology. Take a look at another clip here, it's pretty cool. So there you have it. That's my spiel on why we do not use a conventional mill anymore. We're able to adapt our parts, our process, well not so much our parts, we're able to adapt our process to our parts and make them complete. And this goes back to what I said a moment ago, it's about automation. And if your goal is to get into a shop, if you're in one now, or if you are just interested in our trade and want to get into it, this is, the, this is the direction the machining trade is going to. Automation, higher advancing technology. The way we see it, get with the times or you're going to lose the work because somebody is going to make a part like this in one op. And if you're making it in four, five, six operations, eventually someone's going to quote that a little bit cheaper and the work is going to go. So that being said, that's my spiel. Why we don't use mills, well, um, your stereotypical mill, but the live tooling, I consider these machines having a mill, and when I program, set up, operate, I look at that as a milling head. It's not, it's a turret. It's not technically like a B-axis milling head or whatever it is, I've never been on one of them, but I treat it like a mill. Hopefully you liked the video. Leave a comment below. Do you run the same types of parts? What types of machines do you run? If you're new in the industry, drop a comment. Ask a question. If there's anything that's unclear, you can find me on my socials at Instagram, TikTok, of course, here on YouTube. I always like to try to answer the comments or my DMs as often as possible. Hit me up. Let's get the conversation going. 
like, subscribe, share the video, trying to get the subscriber count up. Thank you for watching. Once again, this is Luke with Crusader Machining, and we'll see you next time.